Okay, so we'll start. Thank you very much for joining us. And if someone joins along the way, we'll be kind to have him. So it's very personal and I'm very excited. And uh, yeah, I was dreaming, dreaming about this night that I can host Lee as an Olympic medalist and take advantage of um our connection i'm really excited about it so apparently there's more than one way to fulfill zionism so you guys do it by supporting jnf supporting israel and uh, both liz parents Oron and dalit on who is here with us and dalit who is uh, my wife edith's sister so Ron and Dalit, both of them were officers in the Navy and they served in the, in the Navy, both of them for many years. And that's another beautiful way to defend Israel and support Israel and uh, fulfill your Zionism. And their son, Lee, is doing it in a very different way by representing Israel in the most important and glorious areas like the Olympic games. So Eli, Eli, shalom, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everyone. And hi, Zoe. So um, just very shortly, Lee is 26 years old, and uh, he's a professional Israeli judoka for already 15 years, kind of. And his first medal was 2011, when he got won the bronze medal in the European Cadet Championship. Um, two years later, November 14, 2014, he won the bronze medal again at the under 23 European Championship in Poland. And his first tournament as a senior, he took a medal in 2015 and he won the uh, bronze medal in Budapest, in the Budapest Grand Prix. September 16, he won the silver medal at the Grand Prix that was held in Zagreb. And April 2018, he won the bronze medal in the Grand Prix of uh, Tbilisi. Uh, in 2019, European, European Championship, championship um, he won the silver. So he became vice European champ. And uh, the last year, Every time COVID allowed, he participated in a few uh, Grand Slam competition and uh, he made it to uh, what's called 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. And uh, Lee is competing uh, in under 90. But I think from all the celebrations, he already participated since he came back. I think he can easily now compete in under 100 or maybe 100 more, right? The Holy. Around that, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for, for joining us. Now, Lee, as you will feel, quite shy. He's not a big talker, and he feels much, much more comfortable fighting than uh, uh, speaking, but we'll ask him a few questions, and then also you, you'll be invited to ask him questions directly and uh, we'll make him sweating, but it's been, gonna be okay. Now, I think we can start off by being honest and say that no one attended, Lee, no one is joining us tonight to see your pretty face or my pretty face. I think we all wanna see this metal thing that you're wearing. Yeah, a bit, I need to a little bit maybe change the camera. <laughs> wow. Okay. How heavy is it? How uh, heavy is it is? It's pretty heavy, yeah. You need to feel it. I think it's around like uh, half a half a kilo. I don't know in Australia it's uh, by pound, no? Yeah. Uh where can Actually, only the, sure. the outside, 
the outside of the medal, it's bronze, because uh, the Japanese now, um, all the, the Olympic Games was like, um, like a green Olympic for the environment. And uh, like, for example, we sleep on a bed from, uh, not wood, like a carton. Okay, yeah, yeah, like a carton, yeah, okay. I'll explain it. Cardboard. Yeah, so all the medals, carbon. They made it from uh, phones. Not use phones, we melt it and we make the inside medals and only the outside, the bronze, the gold, and the silver. Is... Okay. That's for the color. And I'm sure from Saturday you take showers with it and you go to sleep with it and you don't leave it. Of course. You know, we say uh, the medal dream on you, not you on the medal. So uh, I just to do, have to do my, my part of the deal. Absolutely. Tell me in general, how was uh, Japan? How was Tokyo? How were you able to see a little bit from Tokyo? How was the routine of the life in the Olympic village? Yeah, um, actually it's my seventh time in Tokyo. So a uh, little bit familiar with the streets. Um, unfortunately, this uh, Olympic event was under the COVID situation. So um, it's a little bit, it's a different uh, competition, different uh, situation. Like uh, you can out, go out of the village. The village was uh, under a bubble and uh, only, only bus to the competition, to the training hall, and that's it. Even uh, each uh, athlete get uh, the accreditation to get into the village and outside. And uh, usually you can go out uh, from the village or you can see go to see another uh, athlete competition like in different sports, athletic, uh, football, swimming. It's part of the, all the celebration. And uh, this time you can see only the judo. Like uh, the daily routine was uh, really pretty much the same every day training in the morning before the we arrived like one week before and because of the jet lag of course and a little bit you know you have to cut the the weight before the judo it's i compete under 90 kilo so i have to lose a couple of pounds before the the way in the um, I, I like to lose and after weight. the competition start every it's um What did they Every when, day uh, compete. Uh, when do they weigh you the day night again? before? When do they weigh you the way the night before? Yeah, the weigh in is the night before, um, eight o'clock. It's eight p.m. Uh, local time, of course, and uh, then the competition is the day after. Okay. Now let's start like going chronologically and start with the individual competition that was held Wednesday, like eight days ago. Wednesday night. Yes, and again, you are competing under 90 and uh, you beat the first round. Who was it against? Against a Czech, Czech guy. Okay. Czech Republic. Okay. And you were unlucky because your next one was against the one that was ranked mm -hmm. number four in the world. I think you are you are 20, 21, right? I'm 21. And he he is number four. And the one, one of the, the best athletes in the category. And he took the gold eventually. Yeah, he finished. Uh... He finished with the gold medal. Yeah, he, he won the the title, the, the glory, everything. Okay. So in a few minutes, we're gonna get to the great day of Saturday, but let me get you back, back to your pains. So mm. you took you 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 actually took him to the floor and you gained the wasari that actually all the officials said it must have been. An Ipon, but you get only Wazari, but you led. But then eventually 
he beat you. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you were the only one on that day, you were the only one that took a point against him from all his way to the gold. Am I right? Yeah. I'm only the only one who makes score against him. He was like, uh, was in zone, in his own on the, the day. Like uh, he beat everyone, I won't say easily, yeah, but uh, you see the, 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 like he was on his day. Like uh, to be an Olympic champion, you know, you know, most of the athletes we come, we make it for the Olympic Games are really good. Like they, they, they fast, they strong, they, they have a good technique. The, the level are like anyone can beat anyone and everyone good. But in the end of the day, only four people stand on the podium. The, the gold medal, the silver and two bronze. Um, and you know, my coach, only, like for an Olympic medal, you need a little bit luck. In each sport, sometimes for it's a special day. Like everything needs to be connected. Like in the end of the day, most of us are can we have the ability to make Olympic medal, but only four people will stand in the end of the day on the on the winner stand. But is sometimes it we need a little bit luck. Sorry, is it something that you feel in the morning? Like you you wake it's up in the morning and you feel it is my day or it is not my day? Um, in my age and after my uh, experience, like uh, you understand, you can feel really good in the morning, for example, and uh, feel shitty on the on the tournament. And it can be opposite. You can wake up and feel shitty, and like they push you with uh, your back to the wall, and suddenly you you make the best day of it. Like uh, and no rules. You have to. Bring yourself mentally to the competition, to the fight, and uh, give your best. Like uh, it's gonna help you also recover after the competition. No matter if you lose or you win, like uh, the judo guys, we have a uh, 24, uh, 24 uh, hours, like one day uh, rule that uh, no matter what happened in the competition, sad or uh, or happy, 24 hours later you just continue the training and get like uh, no matter it's good or bad okay so after in each competition uh, you have to know it really helps to to continue to get motivated by uh, knowing you give your 100 percent you give everything because we all know sport you can lose you can win in the end of the fight the better man will win shake the hand you know you also have to know how to lose judo is really a respectful uh, sport. Like the Japanese, the, the bounce, the, the shake. Uh, you never talk to the referee, like in football, for soccer, for example. Like um, also connected to if the referee gave a wasari or a pawn, you really can talk to him or uh, make him change it or change the red car. Or... And uh, this is what I'm saying a little bit luck uh, can help you on a really special day. The but knowing you, you give your uh, 100 percent is Wednesday night. Again? Wednesday night after you saw that you were so close to beat the one that actually took the gold, did it make you more frustrated or more uh, motivated for the future? So uh, yeah, you can take it to the both sides. In one end, like um, you say, I mean, I say. I mean, like um, after, of course, after the immediately after the fight, you lost. Like you, you get you get it, like um, prepare for the this day. We say you prepare for Olympic Games four years, but actually you prepare all your life for this event. So of course you feel really bad, frustrated after the fight. No matter what, you lost. You just lost your biggest test, the the Olympic the Olympic Games. Um, in the end of the day, you see who you lost, finish with the gold medal. Yeah. You can, like, say, uh, okay, I lose for the, the best man. Like, uh, I need to be luck, and uh, you can be frustrated, you can uh, get down. And then in the other end, like you say, uh, you can, it gives you some positive point about next goals. Like, uh, you understand how, how close, like, you could do it. Yeah. 
And it's oh. also, it's help you. For me, I just try to, to take the positive things from the fight, from the day, from the experience. And usually you have to be a positive in these sports, in life. If you want to get better and like continue for the next target. Right. Now during the week, uh, because all the uh, Israeli judokas um, failed to get the medal, failed to get to the podium. Each one had his own day, but no one got the medal. And I'm sure that criticism from the Israeli media also got to you. How, was, how, how did it feel? Yeah, actually, we didn't have a quite great uh, singles tournament for all the team. Um, and the Israeli media was, I think, not only the media, all the, the country really expected from the judo. It was the, uh, the most successful Olympic sports in Israel. Like uh, before Tokyo, we had uh, only nine medals, Olympic medals in Israel, and uh, five of them is from the judo. So each Olympic, like the, the most expectation and uh, all the eyes of the country going on the judo. And um, so we really didn't have a single uh, tournament so successful. And the media in Israel can be really cruel and can be really actful also. This is the Israeli. Um, you know, the, the, the media didn't uh, understand it so much. They, they criticized us, the team. And uh, for me, I try not to, I try not to avoid, but like doing my own, and, and see the fight, like don't, don't get too emotional about uh, what write in the paper on, or in the social media. And after you compete so many years, you know how to, to deal with it. And actually in the end of the tournament, uh, the media loved us again. <laughs> yeah. Let's move to Saturday. And before talking about the, the fights on Saturday that brought you, to, brought you the medal, that was the first time in the Olympic Games that they had this team competition. Now, judo is very much sport for individuals. It's one against the other. And then now you have to fight again against someone else. But actually, you are now part of the team. So you're individual, but also it's a teamwork. Did it feel very new for you? How, how did it feel? And the fact that you fought not only in the Olympics, but for this very team, did it make you even more motivated? How, how did you feel about it? I always say the, the greatest honor of an athlete is carrying the flag or the chest. And when you win any, tournament, any medal in any tournament, raise the flag on the podium uh, ceremony. It's the greatest honor and the most respectful thing, for my opinion, men can do for his country. Um, you know, I, I started judo when I was five years old. My DNA, it's uh, like, it's not a team uh, sport. Like, uh, I know to be dependent only on myself and I trust only on myself because I fight, always fight, since day one, I fight alone. And uh, it was really a mixed feeling. Like uh, the first first time in the Olympic Games, they have a mixed team, like a team event. Um, suddenly, you don't depend only on yourself. You can point for the for the team. Um, I really also felt the the other guys from the team. Like uh, we didn't know from the for the first fight that we fought against the Italian team, and. You, we didn't really know how to to react about it. Like, of course, we cheer each other, but after the first the first fight and the second fight against France, we a little bit get loose and really felt excited about the competition and cheering on the, the other athletes of Israel. And it was really intense, really close. We we almost beat on the quarterfinal France. We finished the the Olympic with the gold, the Olympic medal. 
the French team. We only lost like by a point with a let's say the golden score in the end. Really, really was a close match. Um, it's really different experience from the compete alone, single. Um, more losing a little bit. You only you don't only depend on yourself. Um, and actually, we had a really great fun, all the team. And uh, we're really happy we finished with a medal. Amazing. Yeah, so that day, the Israeli team fought four times, I think. Again, Italy, France, Brazil, yeah. and Russia. From those four fights, um, the coach had a decision in the last one against Russia to use some other judoka, but you did fight the first three and you did, and you did the beautiful two Ipons against the Brazilian and the French one. Um, uh, as I said, usually your fights are quite short because it finishes after a minute or so by Ipon. If I can ask my friend Igal, he has a, uh, a, a short video of 20 something seconds from your Ipon against the Brazilian or French? The Brazilian. Okay, the Brazilian. so if Igal can show us this short video, please. No problem. Bevakasha. One second. Can I just ask, can you just explain how, how it works with the team? event i understand how it works individually but what's the rules with the team is it just total points yeah so um it's like a free weight category and free weight category for the girls by the for the girls 57 minus under 70 and 70 plus for the boys is 73 90 and 90 plus and uh, the coach can like uh, write on the on the form two athletes for each category. Uh, so it's also sometimes it's a, a strategy game, like to see who the, the opponent, the opponent gonna, gonna fight and you can change, like uh, matchup uh, things and something like that. I fought the free first fight and for the last fight, the, my coach, uh, uh, he picked the, the other guy problem the coach is the coach um, even, and, uh, even, even, even when he's wrong each win the <laughs> you know the coach always right he's the coach um, uh, for the question again uh, each fight of uh, each fight you win you get one point and um, you have to get uh, the one who gets first through four best for the next uh, for the next level in case of uh, free free wins like happened to us in the first uh, two fights against Italy and French there is a random draw for one of the the category and then uh, they fight the, the last fight and tiebreaker so uh, in the first match against Italy we was in this situation free free. And the girl, Gilly Shari, under 70 kilo, she got on the random draw, the, she won. We passed the Italian we, for the next uh, level against French on the quarterfinal. Same situation, 3-3, free, free, random draw. Again, 70 girl. And this time, unfortunately, French uh, took the last point for free to them and they passed to the semi-final and then took the gold medal, of course. And we like a drop for the repsage fight against Brazil. That was uh, not easy, of course, but uh, we won a free, a four, two, sorry. In this fight, in this uh, fight I won, the Brazilian, and you see can uh, show the video right now. Yeah, you got yeah. yeah, I'm showing. Sure. One second. Okay. Just a second. Okay, 
אתה לא בעוד שפות הפיזיות לא בעת ופיזיקו אותו בתרגיל הזה שאנחנו אוהבים Great. But it's amazing for me to, to, to see, Lee, every, even when you have amazing fights and amazing epons, you never show excitement, you never show joy, you hardly smile. I mean, is it, is it a tactical thing or, or what? I think it's more like a character uh, thing, like, um, you know me, I... Uh, I just enjoy the fight, respect the event. Usually um, I help him to shake his hand before the, the bounce, help him to stand up. In my heart, I'm really happy. I did the, uh, I won. Uh, I did a point for the team, for the country. Uh, believe me, I'm, uh, I'm really happy. And uh, I'm just stay, uh, trying to stay um, no pack. Focused, oh, okay, calm, yeah, okay. Now, yeah, calm, respect your opponent. As I said, judo is really respectful sport. Um, usually, most of the athletes may not really celebrate like a soccer player or something like that. Uh, you bounce, you shake the head, you continue for the, the next fight, the next goal. Yeah. Now, I know that you lived for these moments of fighting in the Olympics, and in particular, standing on the podium. How did it feel standing on the full podium and see the Israeli flag going up? And was it similar or, dif or different to the views or thoughts you had all those years waiting to get to this moment? Um, for the first, I say it's an amazing feeling. Like, uh... To do to get reward for all the hard work and uh, think you did all your life like uh, to get the the okay you did it you deserve it and for me I'm I'm still processing I feel like uh, because for me I feel uh, I had a target on the individual event and it's still mixed feeling um it's like a Happiness mixed with joy, uh, joy mixed with uh, sadness. Like for me, I a little bit failed. Like I, uh, a little bit, uh, I really expect it for me. Like I know my abilities, I believe in myself. Uh, I, I'm talking about the individual event. But then so you finish, like you go back home and you understand that you're back with Olympic medal and uh, Really, we saw a lot of people wait for us in the airport when we landed and we saw the echo it's did for the country and uh, how we make people joy and happy in Israel. Like, uh, it really makes you happy, like uh, warm the heart and also the stand with the, on, on the biggest podium I ever saw in the Olympic Games, like uh, almost uh, 50 people, 60 people even stand on the podium. On the podium. Like um, each each team have almost 12 uh, athletes, so uh, so it's 24 athletes on the bronze and 12 and 12 for the silver and the gold. So it's 48 people, huge podium, and crazy, really crazy, and really really happy. It's finishing. Can, can I ask why why is it um, not one winner for the third? Why is there two thirds? Because uh, in judo, the draw, like it's not uh, all the, uh, the, 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 the competition itself, it's not by a league a style. Like if we have, a, for example, in uh, my category in world champion, there is almost 100 athletes. So I can fight one day in, against 99 people. So the draw goes like um, after you get, it's knockout until the quarterfinal, in, uh, no matter in the individual event and also the team event. So after eight teams arrive for the quarterfinals, there is the repassage. And uh, we just, it's for only for make it a little bit shorter for the day because we never finish the day if we have to fight everyone. So uh, also the draw.
this is the structure of the of the judo competition. What are the plans for Paris 2024? This, the fact that you got the bronze, it means you tick the box of getting an Olympic medal or because it's bronze and it was team, it motivates you to keep fighting, keep, keep training because you want to do it in the individuals? What's, what are the plans? For sure, for sure. I, I still stand for the 24-hour uh, rule. Um, we, we, we get a little bit uh, for vacation. My coach uh, say for, you know, for the joke, I can't see you anymore, go home. <laughs> it was really, really, really intense year. And uh, every day, each day you get closer for the, the competition, like um, for the targets, it really gets intense. Like uh, my usual routine, it's uh, every day I train on the morning and in the evening. And feel really the the pressure before. Like um, let's say my coach kick a little bit uh, s for us. Train uh, train us really hard before. So uh, a little bit time to recover, also mentally, also physically. Some of us was uh, injured, like a small injury. Uh, but uh, we go for pace for sure. By, 100% really motivated. It's also now because of the COVID situation, it's not four years, it's already three years. So it's really, really close. Three years in uh, judo, it's really, really fast. And um, I believe I will be a little bit on a rest time, but um, I think the next competition will be in uh, January. Like uh, Israel uh, host the uh, maybe, maybe maybe it's gonna be a grand show on uh, January in Tel Aviv, and uh, hopefully it will be crowd. Let's see with the COVID situation and uh, it's really special competition for us to compete against the home crowd. So probably my first tournament will be in January, of course, and uh, the main target again is uh, the Olympic Games in uh, Paris 2024. Hopefully, we'll be back with two medals from them, also in the individual event and uh, maybe another team event. I'm Toda. I'm happy to open to questions from whoever. If you have some questions to Lee. No, I was just going to ask you said you train in the morning and the, in the evening again. I mean, can you earn a living from judo? Are you a professional athlete or you've got to have a, a job as well? I'm a professional athlete, yeah, and I don't have time to work. So because I'm trained twice a day, my daily training uh, Winget Institute. It's like uh, the main uh, sports center of uh, Israeli for Israeli team. Um, actually, you know, uh, unfortunately for uh, judo, the government uh, doesn't pay enough. Like. Um, I get my salary for most of us. So the judo athlete, we get our salary from a medium or large companies like sponsorship. Um, it gives you some, you know, uh, quiet your mind a little bit to focus only on training and your targets and, uh, you know, prepare yourself for the competition for the Olympic Games. Um, the, the country, the support is really, really small. Like um, most of the support is from the sponsor. Like um, for the last four years, uh, McDonald's Israel was uh, supporting, and also uh, Nestle, Nestle Awesome Israel. And this is my main, my main uh, salary from them. Um, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I was going to ask another question. Uh, there were a few um, athletes that pulled out of events because they didn't want to uh, compete against an Israeli. Is, is there any anti-Semitism or is there any anti-Israeli sentiment within judo? And, and just out of interest, did you feel any anti-Semitism or, or you know, feel anything just being in the athlete's village? 
yeah, there is uh, some of the, uh, actually also against me in one of the Grand Slam, a Algerian guy didn't uh, show up for the fight. He faked his injury. Um, for the judo, I think, for, no, for, for clothes. Like uh, now was the Olympic Village was with many athletes from different kinds of sports. They can talk from the judo. Um, there is some you can feel a little bit uh, we want to avoid from uh, Israeli people, but uh, most of them, like the Iranian guy, uh, Said Mulai, maybe you know his name, is uh, competing in uh, 81 category. Um, we really like the Israeli, or like, I mean, they more from their own governments, own uh, people at home, then they, they hate, they not like hate the Israel. Like, uh, we're really afraid from, from them, from them home, from home. Uh, as an athlete from the judo, uh, I did feel, uh, didn't feel a void or offense or any, any hard feeling for, for any, 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 and even I fight the Egyptian guy in one of the tournament and uh, even shake my hand. Usually the Egyptian guy is not allowed to shake our hand. By I mean if the it's like a form and a TV and we could see it from the from his own country. The problem really is the for example the Iran government they're really really afraid from the the, the ruler. The and I said also judo is really important. They really respect uh, all the athletes and uh, each other. Lee, where is Australia on the map of of the judo of the world? Uh, uh, maybe there are uh, also, I think, uh, one boy and one girl. Uh, a man who competed under 66, and uh, the girl, I think, she's uh, 70. We didn't have enough uh, athletes for them yet, but uh, we're really growing up. You know, the the good thing in Israel, it's uh, for judo, for example, we are really, really small country compared to Australia. And um, like we have the Wingate Institution, it's like uh, located into Netanya, so it's the, pretty much the center of Israel. And uh, it's really much easier for us to grow as a team because we live together, train together, like compared to a really, really big country. So they like more the situation in Australia, they, they train in the clubs. Like we don't have uh, for them own institute, like the team train together the day, but uh, they're growing up. Like uh, each, each uh, Olympic games, they get more athletes and uh, you get more athletes for the Olympic games. It's more money and it's more children. They coming for the, for the judo. I really making a good job. Like, uh, you know, it's progress. It's taking time to, to build the, we didn't be Rome in one day. <clears throat> so we are really in a good way. And I believe in, uh, we going also, we, um, I don't remember the name of the city, but uh, it's going to be Olympic again in uh, Australia in uh, 2032. Yeah, in um, Brisbane. Brisbane. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think it, I heard that David they, Moses was do, training for Brisbane <laughs> in the heavyweight category. Say again. David Super. on this call is training for the heavyweight category <laughs> for 2032. Super heavyweight. Yeah. <laughs> he, he pulled out the the red belt from the the closet. <laughs> Lou, do you, I'll get Lou, it. Lou, do you want to ask a <laughs> question? Just un, unmute yourself, please. Lou, please unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Ooh. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, if you want to ask a question, please unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Sorry. Lou, you need to unmute yourself. You are, you are on mute.
We can't hear you, Lou. Any more questions? I have, Yossi. Please. Shalom. Hi, Lee. Um, I have a question that um, always fascinating me. So, you know, in soccer before you or basketball, before you um, compete against the team, you learn a lot about them and, you know, the, the, how the, the technique and the best players and etc. Do you as a, um, as a judo fighter, do you need, do you learn, do they teach you everything about the opponent um, all of them because you don't know of course which one you're going to to fight with but do you learn about them the technique how to beat them what's the soft side etc of, of course yeah now even in the you know in the modern area each fight after the, you fight the fighter radio on the media there is a special uh, site for that uh, we, we have for all the fights. So today, you, for me, for example, uh, the first thing I back to the hotel after competition day, the, I need to go to see my fight. I need to learn. And uh, also we have a tactical video each, uh, each night before the competition for the draw, of course. After you see the draw, you're going to know the first fight for sure. And you can uh, play a little bit forward because they usually Everything can happen, yeah, but uh, you need to know, uh, you, you can guess what's next, usually. And uh, also you fight uh, the opponent, um, like, more than one fight, because I fight uh, almost 10 competitions per year, and uh, also training camps. And um, also you have um, um, mental therapy, but uh, you... You see the fight, the video before for the for your opponent, and uh, after you see when you see the video, you can make your uh, fight plan and uh, tack. Like maybe I need to start with right hand or uh, lefty, righty. Um, maybe it's not so good on the ground. Also in judo, we have a ground walk. It's called the niwaza. The fight on the top it's called tachiwaza. And uh, yeah, it's really, really big part from uh, being, a, I think, in each sport to be a sportsman, uh, a man today, like an athlete, uh, video. I know it's happening in most of the, the sports and also for one of the most important things. Great. Uh, Lou, can you yeah. hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, you can hear. My question yeah. is what age is the oldest? judo fighter and also can you tell me your training what you do every day to train as a an olympian are you looking for a fight lou no yes of course <laughs> the oldest yeah the for the olympic now um the oldest uh, actually it was a girl in the under 57 uh, category. It's a uh, Austrian girl. She's not girl, yeah, she's 41 years old. Um, it's really special for judo because uh, it's really tough life, like the body, the mind. Uh, you will experience a lot of injury in judo. Like um, it's, uh, in comparing for football or uh, soccer or basketball. You get a lot of injury. So 41, it's like amazing. Usually, I think you ask the question about like... Um, Your training schedule. How you train every day. My training day. schedule. Uh, yes, of course. Twice a day, morning training, evening training. Uh, usually, it's a gym in the morning, physical training. After that, you go to... To eat, uh, of course, maybe a tactical video meeting with the therapy. You go a little bit rest, and then uh, it's judo training in the evening. And it's, it's pretty much the same every day. So this is your life in the last 20 years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about age. So for the Olympics in 2032, 
I just checked. In 2032, you're going to be 37. You can still compete. Yeah. In I Australia. think uh, I, I will prepare for Paris for now. And uh, after Paris, we make uh, another uh, decision. Great. But uh, ah, it's really fun. I don't, uh, I don't think about it right now. Uh, for me, in Paris, I'll be 29. Um, it's good age. Now, uh, after I also make the first Olympic experience, like uh, I will be more mature, more, uh, more. Uh, the mind will be stronger. Like uh, you know what you're going through. Oh, search. Finally, so, your cousin from Australia. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You've become like a rock star in Israel. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're, a, <laughs> you're like a world celebrity. <laughs> uh, you're looking. Thank you. Thank you. You're looking great. Thank you very much. You too. What a wonderful experience you've had, hey? Yeah, amazing, amazing. Yeah, but you've made a lot of sacrifices during your young life to get to where you're at. You think I'm old already? I'm still young. <laughs> no. Yeah, when are you coming to Australia? Yeah, it's part of part of the part of the business. Make sacrifice. It's okay. Oh, part of, yeah, part of it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But it's all been worth it. Lee, before In we the close, end of, now. Yeah. Before we close the meeting, can we can can we come to an agreement that? After every Olympic medal you take, we're going to have such a Zoom? Yay! <laughs> yeah, of course. Good. You can make agreement like you know. You, you don't have to wait three more years for me. You can just call me again. Next week's okay for me. Mm. Okay, any more questions? Or can we say Laila Tov again to the medal? Mm. <laughs> I think this side, this side is prettier, no? Yay! <laughs> they both look pretty good to me. Yeah. <laughs> Mazal Tov. Lee, Hamoud. Mazal Tov, thank you. Kol HaKavod, Lee, Kol HaKavod. Gein Becha. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you very much to all of you. Laila Tov, and please stay well and safe. Thanks for organizing, Yossi. Thank Thanks for organizing. Thanks, Yossi. Laila Tov. Laila Tov, bye. Yes, bye. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Good night. Lidi, stay here. I'll tell you, you're already here. No, I'm here. Whoa, there he is. Oh, my God. Miriam, you are from Melbourne, right? Yes, I'm in Melbourne. Yes, I've discovered my cousins after 20 years. Good, good on you. Good on you. And I heard... Yeah, Lee and, he, and his brother, Omri. Omri Beautiful Ken, connection. Yeah. <sighs> so we, live in, we live in Sydney, so when, when Omri visited Australia, he also came to visit us. Oh, so you're the person he visited. Yes, I am. Yes, he told me about you guys. Yeah, we're also family because my wife, he did, is Dalit's sister. D Dalit, yes. Correct, correct. Oh, he's a gorgeous young man. He just crept into my heart. <laughs> he's very special. And one day I hope to meet you, Lee. Of course. Yeah, put it, put it on the bucket list. The to-do list. Noted, yeah. No. <laughs> Amazing. Noted. Your English is fantastic. Yes, I can... Like every life, you can make it better. Yeah. You can become better in everything in life. Yep. Yep. We just got to get rid of this terrible virus we've got in the world at the moment. We're in lockdown again. Oh. We're on I think we're going to. I think uh, in the holidays next month, uh, we just say in the news that Israel is going to back again to be in lockdown. Yeah. Did you feel unsafe? Uh, 
with the virus in, in Tokyo? Did you get tested uh, actually, every day? The, the Japanese is really well organized and um, I, I feel really safe. Um, and actually we just um, took care for us. We, we really precautions and uh, really safe and uh, but you couldn't go we out to a, a to a, but no, you couldn't no, go to a pub like or a club or anything. You couldn't socialize. No, no. The, the village was uh, under a bubble, and uh, each team has uh, their own building, and also the Israeli have uh, really tight security. Cause, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, Extra what happened in uh, 1972. Extra so, security, so, yeah. Uh, but really... Yeah. So you didn't, you couldn't, you couldn't see the culture or experience any of the life or no, go down. No, also a really sad thing because usually in Olympic games you can see yeah another swimming and football and in this Olympic I saw only judo. <laughs> oh, so you couldn't even go and see other sports. No, no. only judo. Oh, very limited. Also for us, for the judo, like uh, soccer, yeah, really limited. Yeah, next time. Next time. When's the next Olympics? Hopefully. When's the next Olympics? Paris in uh, 2024 in Paris. 2024. Oh, you better start training tomorrow. <laughs> I will, I will, I do. Yeah, do you, you do a lot of weightlifting? Yeah, like uh, the weightlifting gym, it's uh, in my program, it's between three to five times a week. And the rest of the training is judo. Yep. Also running and uh, physiotherapy, yep. mental and psychological as well. It's very important. Of course, do you yeah, once a week. Do you have CrossFit? Yeah, in I have my own there. Do you have CrossFit? Yes, in of course. Yeah, yes, like we, do, of course. we do CrossFit. Love it. Hello. Yeah. We do everything. <laughs> so you've got your own truck. Oh, sorry. No, so I'm just, I'm just, we need to close the, uh, because the limited time for the Zoom, for the link. Okay. So we need to close it exactly now. Um, I want you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a happy man, yes, yes, <laughs> we are a happy family. Yeah, I bet you are. A gross a naches. A gross a naches, yes. And yes. Judith, Judith must be Meshiga, is she? <laughs> yeah, she's very, very proud. She's walking yeah. around, around the corners and show the newspaper with the face of a uh, grandson. I know, good luck to her, why not? Actually, I'm surprised you. I'm surprised you did allows Lee to keep the middle. Yeah. <laughs> she tried to. To kidnap her. <laughs> I need for the the new one. Okay. All right. Good night. Bye, Miriam. Bye. Bye. We will be in touch. Yes.